Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to share with you how I make anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars every single month as a self-employed appointment setter living in Canada. I will share with you the exact steps that I took to find a job, a good job as an appointment setter, but also how I learned the strategies and the techniques so that you could do the same for yourself. I personally feel like there is not enough content made by appointment setters with a proven track record for appointment setters so here i am so i'm gonna break this video in about like five different parts number one is how do you actually get a good job because that's what everybody wants to know and is probably the hardest thing in the entire um in the entire appointment setting structure process thing whatever you want to call it uh life <laughs> and then number two i'm gonna tell you how you can learn stuff so that you can you know like actually do it and do it on a budget because you don't need to pay thousands of dollars to some appointment setting guru that hasn't done appointment setting in ages and doesn't really know how things are, how things changed since they done it. And then the last few points, I'll just share some tips and tricks and, you know, whatever comes to mind about like how it's like being self-employed. Um, you'll see in the chapters, I'll try to link it for you. But number one, how do you actually get a job as an appointment setter? That's probably the most common question that I get asked in my community, uh, but also in, you know, every time I get to network with other people in the industry is how do you actually get a job that's good, where there's leads, where I'm not just like cold outreaching to all the strangers out there on the internet. And well, the way that I was taught now that I think about it is completely wrong. So I was told to go into Facebook groups that are called like, appointment setter opportunities and closing opportunities and this and that and basically look for people who are looking for appointment setters and try to apply to work with them uh, through those uh, people that are just like posting about these opportunities. I actually got scammed two times. What ended up happening is those people had no business whatsoever and they had no offer. There was basically nothing there and the person who ran that thing wanted appointment setters to just find leads for him out of the blue with no process or way of um, doing it. He never, he never showed us anything really. It was, it was a complete disaster. We were managing the freaking WhatsApp chat. Like, bro, that's just so bad. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, I don't recommend you do that. Uh, so I'm going to share the steps that I took and what I think is going to work for most people out there. The way that I went about it is I started, first of all, I started friending people on Facebook who are already successful in this industry because what ends up happening is those who are successful they have the same friend groups everybody knows everyone this industry is actually extremely small especially people who actually do shit <laughs> very small circle and so as I started to friend some of these people I basically started to build my network of those who are successful in the industry and also I started paying attention to where they work and where like the opportunity is. So if you look at my Facebook profile and you look at most of my like recent friends or people who engage with my posts, that's how you're going to find out like, you know, people who are active in the industry right now, who are actually getting results, who are working somewhere where it actually makes sense to work. And so that was my step number one. And then step number two, I stalked the hell out of these people. I should you not. Sounds ridiculous. Let me explain. So I went on to people's profiles and I started seeing like, okay, who are they interacting with? What kind of posts are they promoting? And like, who are people thinking that I, who are the people who are commenting on some of these uh, posts? And I saw an interesting comment on a post about appointment setting and how hard it is to find good appointment setters. And the so that was the sales manager of the, my first, my very first gig that I applied to work at that wasn't a scam. Uh, he was basically sharing like, oh, it's extremely hard to find good appointment setters. There's a huge churn, but we're always willing to give people a shot because that's the only way to like filter crap from some decent appointment setters, right? Like most people come into this industry thinking they can make all this money online. Uh, they have no prior experience nor do they want to work hard like it's actually pretty crazy that people don't even try to work hard because they're sold on the dream that appointment setting only takes two hours a day and you can make 10k in two hours a day like motherfucker really really <laughs> I'm sorry bro no it's just not gonna work this way so that's what i saw i saw that conversation happen in real time between the sales manager of the company that i applied to work for and a recruiter who had some sort of a relationship with that sales manager and so as they were sharing how hard it is to find appointment setters i strategically slid into their dms what's up boys 
this is important, all right? Let me just, let me just, you know, break it down a little bit slower for y'all because if I go really fast, it's gonna go, you know, from one ear up the other or whatever the hell the saying is. Instead of like pitching myself into the first initial outreach message, which most people do and it goes horribly and you should never do that. Um, and that's how you do appointment setting. That's also probably how you're gonna be at appointment center and nobody likes getting cold pitch in the first message, especially if they have no idea who you are. So what I did instead is I had a quick back and forth in the comments section of that post on Facebook. So I said something along the lines of like, why is it so hard finding a good appointment setter? And what are, what are the kind of like the values and the qualities that are you're looking in an appointment setter for your company, right? So I'm not going straight for the kill. Like, you know, appointment setting and setting in general, it's like dating. So if you're a girl, and you go to the bar. Some freaking character over there slides in next to you being like, hey girl, you like, what are you trying to say tonight? Um, swipe left, like get away from me. But if some character slides in and starts a conversation about, I don't know, some random things that happened today or the weather or whatever, something that's just like not scary, then it's easier to have a conversation with someone. Right. And then eventually, once there is a little bit of rapport built, then you can ask and like go for the kill and all that good stuff. Right. So that's what I did. I was like, hey, like, who are you looking for? What are you looking for? Like, why is it so hard? Just open ended questions. You need open ended questions for the conversation to take place. Don't ask a yes or no. Like, yes or no is just like shooting yourself in the head. Don't do that. Open ended. Keep it cool, keep it chill. You're just trying to figure out what's going on here. And then from there, the person kind of shared, it's like, oh, we're just looking for someone hardworking, like we can train them everything. It's really hard to find setters because nobody knows what the hell they're doing. Neither did I at the time. And then from there, it was basically an easy, hey, do you mind if I just like send you a, me send you a message and like see um, if I can help you, help you out? So obviously the person said yes. And that's where I kind of like introduced myself and basically said like, oh, thank you so much for like sharing your perspectives. Uh, I'm actually looking for a job. I'm an appointment setter. Uh, I've done X, Y, and Z things. You know, this is my like resume, you know. I didn't do the whole thing right away, all right? I basically just asked them like, oh, are you guys possibly looking for another appointment setter? And then from there, I kind of like started sharing a little bit more while trying to ask questions to keep the conversations flowing, right? You don't ever just want to like, boom, hit them with a statement and then get out of there. You know, it's just like not the way to go. Instead, you want to try and make it like organic, make it fun, you're networking, you know, like mingling. It wasn't like a huge, long, freaking paragraph of like, hey, I'm looking for a job, please hire me. None of that. It needs to be strategic. You want to have a you basically are trying to test the waters. The best way to describe it is like, you're also qualifying if you want to work for that company. Um, so you can ask questions like, oh, I see you work in so-and-so company. Like, how's your experience been like? How did you get in the closing position? How did you get into setting position? How did you get in the marketing position? Like, just get to know the person, then get to know the company. And then, um, and then only after you have some rapport build, you can basically say like, oh, by the way, I'm also an appointment setter looking for an opportunity. I've done X, Y, Z things. Like, are you possibly looking for someone right now? Right? Like, don't send your resume. Don't say like, oh, I'm committed and compassionate and uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, huh. they don't care. It's way too early for that. You don't even know like if they're looking for an appointment setter or not. That's the easiest process. Right? So just to recap, number one, I found people in the industry. Number two, I started adding them all as friends. I started connecting and reaching out to them through the public section of the social media. Not the private one, not the DMs. I'm not cool enough for the DMs yet, eh, no problem. I'm gonna start with the public one. I'm gonna start with the comments section. I'm gonna start with the posts and I'm gonna see what the hell's going on there. And then once they see me a little bit, then I can slide in the DMs and get comfy and everything and start getting to know them and the company. That's number one, how to get a job. Now I made a few videos on like, how to look for companies to work for. You can basically go and look at like podcasts for coaches, consultants and course creators and like see who's doing what and who you can start uh, building a list of the potential people that you might want to reach out to. There's tons and tons of coaches and consultants out there. There's more of them than there's real businesses out there in the world. So freaking go crazy out there. 
Number two is you find people who are already in the industry and you start adding them as friends. You start to see who are their inner circle and you start adding the inner circle. And then you pay attention to the posts and the conversations that are happening in the public. You interact with them and then you bring it to the private front in the DMs. If you want to learn exactly how to do it, I have a course, I have a group, you can check it out in the description and then I'll, I'll catch you in the, on the inside if that's what you want to do. Uh, if you want to get all the steps broken down for you a little bit in more depth. Now, moving on to section number two, which is how do you learn the skills of appointment setting? So the companies that I worked with in the past had some basic training on how to do appointment setting. But the thing with a lot of these online startups is nobody ever goes back and like checks how good the process is. <laughs> so if the setting process was made in 2018, it's not gonna work in 2023. I don't even know how many companies survive for that long, to be honest, in this industry, but that's a different video. So that's important for you to know is like, don't expect people to tell you exactly how it's going to be. The thing about sales is you can have all these processes, you can have all these systems, but you know what? You're dealing with people and good luck applying systems to people that have no idea of the system to begin with. Here's what I mean. When you're an appointment setter or a salesperson, you're speaking with people who don't know they're in the sales process or know they're in the sales process and try trying to like actively sabotage you. So if you are just thinking like, oh, I'm just going to apply this nice little script that I have here and things are going to go exactly how I want them to go. Get dunked on because that's never going to happen. <laughs> the chances of that happening, like of people actually smoothly going through the process that you have created, it's like one out of 30 or 50 people that you speak with. It's extremely rare. And when that happens, you know, you got to be careful because something's not right. <laughs> I would rather say things are never going to go the way you want them to go. So you better be prepared to just figure it out on the spot. But it's really important to at least have an understanding of what the hell you're doing. So um, thankfully, these companies that I worked for, they had some coaching, they had some training. So they showed me the basics of how to do appointment setting and how to think like a salesperson. And... Once I, once I was able to understand the methodology, then I was able to apply like a basic script and then tweak it as I go through these conversations with people because some people have no idea about the business and so you want to warm them up with the content and then there's other people who know exactly what you do and they're ready to jump on a call and you don't want to like fondle with them for too long. You just want to send them onto the sales calls and let it rip. So again, there's a lot of the stuff that goes into it. So if you want to learn the basics, so at least you're not like, completely oblivious. Um, I have a free training in my Facebook group. You're welcome to come in and see and check it out. It's literally like 20 minutes long or whatever, where I break down how to think like an appointment setter and what messages to send to book calls as an appointment setter. So um, feel free to join the group if you want to, and I can show you everything there. The best way to learn how to think and do things as an appointment setter is just to get a baseline. So that's typically provided to you through like a uh, a business that you're already working with or it's provided to you through people like myself who have done this before and you know and you can trust them and the things are going to you know work out so i'll say that's the best thing and then another really important thing to mention here is you need to be actively paying attention to what you're doing and what conversations you're having and what messages work and don't work so that if they work you can replicate them again, but if they don't work, you want to just get rid of them and never use them again because that's how you know um, things are just not going to work out. <laughs> Those are kind of like my main three tips of how to actually learn appointment setting. Um, and the last few things that I wanted to talk about is the finances. That's going to be extremely important for you. Now, important disclaimer, I am in no way, shape or form certified to give you any financial advice whatsoever. So don't listen to me, go to some professional who actually knows what they're doing. If you need some specific advice, go to a person who knows what the hell they're doing. Number one, how can you make five to $8,000 as an appointment setter? The way to make good money as an appointment setter is to find a good opportunity, but also go like above and beyond to make sure that people show up on those sales calls. 
You see, your only job as an appointment setter is to book people into sales calls and make sure they show up. And they better be quality people. But that's kind of like, you know, that's your process. The outcome is book quality people and make sure they show up. That's it. When you are looking for an opportunity, you want to make sure that, you know, hopefully there's some form of base pay and commission. Ideally, there is at least like a $2,000 base pay of some sort. Then everything else, you have to be able to generate that on commission. So for companies that like are not sales agencies where you're kind of like a contractor who's being outsourced through a third party into a business to work with, uh, if you're working directly in-house as a setter for a company, that's where you can make the most amount of money. Typically, you would need to book about seven appointments every single day. So from those seven appointments, about 70% of those will show up or they should show up. So again, you kind of need to be skilled to be able to get that many people to actually show up onto the sales calls. And then from those 70% of people who show up on the sales calls, about 20 to 30% should buy. We have five calls that show up and then out of five calls, so out of five calls, you get one closed deal. So, and let's say the company has an offer of about $7,000 and your commissions are about $300. You, If your base pay is 2K, you wanna make 5K, right? We know that you need to get uh, that for every seven calls that you book, only five show up and then you can get one deal, hopefully out of all of those. And you know you need to make about at least $3,000 in commission to be able to get 5K as an appointment setter. Uh, that means you need to be able to get 10 closed deals. So easier said than done, right? Because now we have to think back and think, oh, how many people do we need to book on calls how many people show up and then how many people close. You have to be able to book at least 71 appointments every single month. That's a decent amount of appointments. That's that's a lot of appointments, man. So if you don't have any uh, lead flow to you, right? So if you're doing just cold outreach, it's gonna be fairly hard to get that many deals. So ideally you're looking, as an appointment setter, you're looking for businesses that have already some sort of brand, some sort of presence on social media that you're just not like cold outreaching. Now, how do you, how can you find uh, brands on social media and make sure that they actually have it? Well, when you find a business that you think is worth applying to, just go through their socials, find a website. Do they have a website? If they don't have a website, why? That's a red flag. Do they have Instagram? Do they have YouTube? Do they have podcasts? Do they have... I don't know what else is out there. LinkedIn, like Facebook ads. You can go into Facebook ads library and see what the hell is happening there. I'm not gonna go into that. You can learn, you can look that up literally to see how many ads and what are the kinds of ads that these businesses promoting. But just keep in mind that you're looking to generate about 70 calls per month to get 10 closed deals to make 5K as a setter. Or you just work for a company that closes deals like crazy, which those are extremely hard to find. That's where I kind of got lucky. I worked for a sales agency and so they were just unreal in what they were doing. And I got way more closed deals than fucking anyone in this industry. But I also wasn't getting paid like $300 for a closed set because it was a sales agency. It wasn't, I was like an internal appointment setter for like a big brand or anything like that. So. There we go. So that you kind of know the math, let's talk about taxes. Because as a contractor, which is what you are as an appointment setter, you're probably gonna be hired as a contractor. Um, you're gonna have to do all of your own taxes, uh, keep track of all of your receipts, uh, get an accountant or some sort of accounting software that can do all of the stuff for you. I recommend QuickBooks, they work pretty good. No, I'm not affiliated with them. Just had to use something and they were the first thing that popped up. So there's a lot of good things that happen when you're your own contractor. You get to basically can write off a lot of stuff as your own like expenses. So whatever software is that you're using, everything that goes into working and operating a business, such as like your office, the internet, phone, computer, supplies, whatever it is, you can write that off. And so that will help you reduce your taxes by the end of the year, which helps massively because you don't really get, you know, as many benefits in terms of like your retirement plan or your like insurance and healthcare and all that jazz. So it's extremely beneficial to be able to 
spread all of those off, but you want to keep track of everything, including all of the receipts, because if you don't, then, well, the CRA or whoever you have there in the US can come knocking on your door, asking you a lot of questions about where you work and what you do and all that good stuff. So you have to be really careful. The easiest way to learn that is just by researching. And again, once you get a job um, in and around this industry, just get with people who know how to do it, ask them questions, ask them to like jump on a Zoom call and like help you figure it all out. But don't worry about it if you're not even there yet. If you don't even have a gig, just make some money first, man. <laughs> Until then, it just, yeah, I don't know. I find it's probably just easy to get one of those accounting softwares such as QuickBooks or Mint or whatever, whatever is out there. And it's actually just going to tell you like if you select the self-employed it'll literally tell you everything that is like tax deductible and then you can basically put whatever expenses that you can in whatever category and it'll it'll do the whole thing for you so it's probably the easiest way but kind of like go into that with an understanding that i still have to know what the hell is happening in my bank account otherwise it's just gonna be really tedious trying to figure all of that thing out. Oh, and another cool thing about doing your own finances is you get to write off everything that goes into your personal development, especially if it's for work, like 100%, if it's involved into your work, if it's like whatever course or a thing that you had to like learn that costs some money, then you can write it off in your finances. So, yep, yep. Hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know what else you need help with and I'm more than happy to make more content for you for appointment setters, buy an appointment setter. And as always, link for the group is in the description. There's a free course in there as well. You can subscribe to my list, whatever you wanna do. You already know what it is and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, bye-bye.